welcome to Toyota Time with Timmy the Tool Man and Sean. We have a returning guest today, my buddy Greg, who if you remember is the guy we helped with the fuel injector replacement. And we have Greg back here today to do another video. What we're gonna show you how to do today is replace the ECU, which stands for engine control unit, on your first gen Tacoma or your third gen 4Runner because they're basically the same vehicle. The reason why we're replacing the ECU is it's another attempt to fix his misfire problem. Before we replace the fuel injectors for Greg, Greg had already done a couple things to help fix this problem. He replaced the spark plugs, he replaced the spark plug wires, and he swapped a couple coil packs trying to see if the misfire would follow a bad coil pack but none of those worked. So then we did the fuel injector replacement. That didn't work. A couple weeks ago, I got Greg back over to my house and we replaced his upstream air fuel sensor and his downstream O2 sensor. That didn't work either to fix the misfire. Earlier today, we swapped out all his coil packs with three coil packs from a totally different engine. We took it for a test drive and the pending code for the misfire popped up. And then we replaced the mass airflow sensor from the same donor engine and took it for a test drive and the uh, pending code for the misfire popped up again. So now we are going to replace the ECU because somebody mentioned on T4R.org that they were able to fix a misfire problem by replacing the ECU. It's sort of a long shot, but I figured what the hell, we may as well go for it and see if it fixes this problem. I found a guy parting out a Toyota Tacoma on Tacoma World, that is the same year, same model as Greg's truck. Greg has a 2004 Toyota Tacoma four-wheel drive. I was able to pick up that ECU for 150 bucks. Replacing the ECU is pretty straightforward. It doesn't require any special tools. You just gotta get the glove box out of your way. You gotta take a panel out behind there, and then you expose the ECU with all of its electrical connections. Then it's a matter of just unplugging all the electrical plugs, taking a couple screws out, and the ECU just slides right out. Pretty darn simple. And then same goes for getting it back in. You just slide it back in, you screw it back in with the two screws, you plug all your connectors back, and you put the panel and the glove box back in. It's a really simple process and we're gonna show you how to do that. So, let's get started on this job. The first thing we're going to do is disconnect the battery since we're going to be messing around with a lot of electrical plugs. We don't want anything to short out. So we're going to disconnect the negative battery terminal from the battery post. And just stuff that out of the way. Now we have no power going to the vehicle. The first thing we need to remove is this glove box. Pretty simple. There's a Phillips head screw, more appropriately a Japanese industrial screw here. And then there's another one right here. So we're just gonna take those out. Okay, that one's out. Then we just gotta get this other one out. So now you just unlock it. You can pull the sucker right out. That's all there is to it. This is just an iPod cable that he has running through there. So just set the glove box out of your way. The next thing we're gonna do is get this panel out and it's held on by three 10 millimeter bolts. There's one in the upper left. There is one back here in the middle and then there's one on the right side too. So I'm just gonna zip those out with my Milwaukee cordless gun. There's also just a little plastic clip here that we have to free up. I'm just gonna use a flathead screwdriver to compress it and push it through. So that's released. There's these little tabs right here, just a little push tab. So you just push it towards the inside or towards the glove box and then it pops off. And let's do the same with the other one. Okay. And then now there's some little electrical components in here that we have to disconnect. Oh, there we go. You have this glove box light, so you just a push tab on the top, and then you can pull back and get this one free. So that's free. Now this has a clip on it for all these plugs, 
that attach to this cover so we have to get this clip undone this little clip right here on this plastic harness for all these wires clips into the cover that we just took off so what you have to do is you have to pull down on this clip and then push backwards at the same time and then you can get this free so now we have the ECU exposed back here see where all these plugs go the ECU is right back here it's the basically a square metal box I'm just gonna start pushing all these push tabs and pulling all these plugs out so I'm gonna start with the one on the furthest left that one's out I'm gonna go for the next one it's a little tight if you do like two fingers one on the bottom one on the top pushing the tab maybe you could pull it back out Ugh, that one's fighting me I'm gonna go for the one on the far right okay that one's out go for this one again pushing it and wiggling it with your two fingers there we go so if you see how I'm doing that I'm pushing with both of my middle fingers grabbing it wiggling a little bit and pulling it out we got two more left okay there's that one another thing to note is that these are all different sizes so you don't have to worry about labeling them you can't mix them up all right they're all disconnected now you'll see that there's two screws that we have to get out there's one in the top left it's attached to a bracket that attaches to the ecu and then there's one on the top right so i'm just going to get my screwdriver in here okay and then we'll get this one out so now let's see if this thing pops out it just slides out it's got to be careful of the wires here feed this sucker out wow that was pretty easy so now let's go to the workbench and let's show you the comparison all right we've got the ECU from Greg's truck on my workbench and you can see the part number right there and what's great is here's the one I got from the donor vehicle the guy that was parting out a Toyota Tacoma and look it's the same part number which lets us know we got the right one so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swap these brackets over to the donor one so again I'm just taking my JIS screwdriver and I'm gonna undo these two screws okay so just remember the orientation they're definitely two unique shaped brackets just remember which one came off of which side so this is the correct orientation this one with a little bit more metal to it is on the left side or driver side and this one with a little less to it is on the passenger side or the right side where this fits back here way back there you'll see a couple bolts and those are affixing that bracket that the back of the ECU slides into so that's where you're trying to get the ECU to go into so you got to get this thing in here with all these wires in the way so you got to kind of pull them with one hand while you're sliding the ECU in with the other hand and don't let them get caught up on the brackets so I'm just pushing back and maneuvering the wires out of the way you'll know when you got it into the bracket in the back you'll feel it slide into like a slot you'll feel it and then you look to make sure that the screw holes are lining up and these brackets have a little hook tab on the top so you get them hooked onto the top of this part of the body and then now all we have to do is get our screw started okay that one's in now we're gonna get the one on the right okay that one's tight now we just got to plug in all our electrical connectors what is the order that would be best to get these in let's try for the reverse order of where we took them out so this was the last one I took out which is kind of towards the center of the ECU the main thing you don't want to do is damage the pins so you want to get them lined up nicely push in till they snap this one goes over here to the left of that first one that one's plugged in we'll get this one on the far left 
Okay, that one's plugged in. We'll get the next one second from the right. Okay, that one's plugged in. Finally, the one on the far right. All right, all the wiring plugs to the ECU are now plugged in. Now we just gotta get this cover back in place. So this black piece on the cover slides in to this plastic piece right here. So you just have to line those up and slide it together. So that's plugged in. Now we're just gonna plug in the glove box light. That's plugged in. Now we can slide this backwards and get the bolt holes lined up. And then if you push it back, remember these little sight clips will snap in. So I'm gonna get this one snapped in. Like that. Now that holds it in place. Now all we have to do is get the three 10 millimeter bolts started. So I'll go for this one on the left side first. I'll get the one in the center here. Okay. Then I'll get the one on the far right. Okay, they're all started. Now I'm just gonna transition to my ratchet and snug them up. These 10 millimeter bolts are just holding on a light body panel. Whatever wrench you're using, just choke up on it. You don't have to get them super tight. Okay, and the final one on the far right. Okay, all three 10 millimeter bolts are snugged up. Now we just gotta get the glove box back in. The glove box bottom clips go right here. So you slide the plastic clip behind here and then you have the other one that goes in the front on both sides. It's gonna be hard to show up, but as I slide the glove box in, that's what I'm looking for to hook the one solid one behind and the one that swivels goes on the front. Okay, that's hooked in. And then I could just basically lock this and then get the screw started. There we go. Okay. Both of those are tight. Glove box works. Okay, we're just gonna go reconnect the battery. Okay, we're just gonna reconnect our negative battery terminal. All right, so we got the ECU swapped. Now what Greg and I are gonna do is we're gonna take it for a test drive. He's found that he gets a pending trouble code within a few miles, somewhere in the five to eight mile distance, and then somewhere around 20 miles, the code pops. Fingers crossed, we're hoping that this fixes the misfire. If this doesn't do it, we don't know what we're gonna do next. Maybe drive the truck off a cliff. All right, <laughs> we're gonna get driving. We are back from the test drive, and unfortunately, it didn't work. The pending code for the misfire popped back up, and so now we're gonna have to go back to the drawing board and try some other things out, like a leak down test for his number one cylinder, maybe checking the fuel pressure, maybe checking the timing. A good way to look at this is that because of Greg's misfire problem, you are getting some new videos to watch and learn from. We've gotten a fuel injector replacement video out of it. Now we've gotten an ECU replacement video out of it. And soon to come, we're gonna show you how to do a leak down test of a cylinder. And we're gonna show you how to check the timing. So stay tuned for those videos. So with all that said, thank you for watching Toyota Time with Timmy the Tool Man and Sean and returning guest Greg. Thank you for watching, thank you for subscribing. If you have any questions or comments, do that below. Take care, bye bye. Timmy!